In this tutorial, we'll be sewing the Hepworth trousers. All sections are time stamped below for your reference. Before we start, you should have all of your pattern pieces cut and ready to go, as well as fused, notched, and marked. Some useful tools to have handy while you're sewing will be the awl. You'll need a box of pins. You'll need a chalk pencil or a fabric marker. A ruler. You'll need a pair of scissors. Thread trimmers. A pair of sewing tweezers and, of course, the stitch ripper. So, I like to serge as I sew, but if you prefer to serge beforehand, you're going to want to serge these areas. You're going to want to serge all around your uh, front trouser, except for the waist, all around your back trouser, except for the waist area. You're going to want to serge uh, just on that curved area of the pocket lining around the fly and one edge of your belt loop. Now, if you prefer to serge along with me, you're going to want to serge just the curved area of your front trouser as well as the crotch area, the curved area of your pocket lining all around your fly except for the waist area and one edge of your belt loop. I like to prep all of my pieces before I start sewing. It just makes things a little bit faster. So right here, I'm prepping my fly extension. So I'm folding it in half, and then I'm gonna turn in one end at about a half inch. So I'm just kind of pinching it with my finger and then folding it over. I'm gonna press that, and then I'm gonna serge the um, edge there. So now I'm taking my waistband and on the edge that will attach to the waist, I'm pressing it at a half inch. And you're going to want to do this for all four pieces. So this waist uh, band is called a contour waist. Um, it just kind of tapers in at the uh, back. Um, it fits really nicely. I don't know if ever you've uh, purchased a pair of pants and you've had that odd puckering uh, at the back of the waist and that's because they're just using a simple straight waistband uh, with a contour that won't happen. If you like a little extra ease in that back area, you can download the free extension of the straight waistband um, and attach it. It'll be attached in the exact same way, only it'll just be like one piece folded over. So next I'm taking my belt loop. I haven't uh, surged any of this yet, but I'm turning it in at a quarter inch on one end, and then I'm gonna fold the other end over at a quarter inch as well. Now, if you prefer to use a loop turner to um, to create your belt loops, you're more than welcome to do that. You won't need to fold it this way. You'll just be sewing it at a quarter inch along the edge and then turning it through. I 
I like doing it this way because they are quite thin and when I'm using um, the loop turner sometimes with thicker fabrics uh, I have a tricky time doing it so this is just like an easy way to guarantee that I'm gonna get the results I want so now I'm taking uh, one of my pant pieces and I'm turning up the edge towards the wrong side and I'm folding it to the notches so at the one inch mark and then I'm going to fold it again in half to that crease line that we just created so it creates a half inch roll and I'm going to do the same for the other three panel pieces So again, turning it up at the notches at one inch and then folding to that crease that we just created, which creates a half inch. And then rolling it over for a half inch hem roll. I like keeping my um, paper pattern uh, pieces on top of my um, pieces uh, until I sew. Uh, I just like keeping them together. It helps me, especially when I'm dealing with like tricky fabrics like this one, where it's really tough to know which side is the wrong side and which side is the right side. Um, because I always cut uh, my patterns right side up uh, so it just helps me kind of keep a reference for that so we're gonna start with the back darts as well as the back crotch area so using our notches we're gonna match it I've created my marking at the bottom I actually used a string in this case normally I would just chalk it um, and I'm just sewing directly to that line or that marking. You can also use a ruler or any type of um, straight sort of object to make sure that you're aligning those darts perfectly by placing it between. So in this way you're placing it between and aligning it to that bottom um, marking and just sewing directly to and I'm going to do that on both sides and now I'm going to sew my crotch so this is right sides together back panels facing each other sewing at a half inch So because I'm working with a fabric that's got a pattern on it, um, I'm being very careful to match all of my patterns uh, so that the garment looks nice. It, you don't have to do this, I just uh, prefer to do it. I think um, just the overall finished garment looks higher quality when you're matching your patterns and you'll also do this uh, as you're cutting. If you guys want me to make a video on how to lay out your pattern on uh, fabric uh, that's got a pattern, let me know and I'll certainly do that. So now I'm just pressing out those darts and I'm gonna press out the crotch seam. So you can see that looks really nice. And 
And now we're going to start working on the slash pocket. So you'll need your front panels as well as your pocket lining and front panel pocket. So here I'm taking my lining and I'm aligning it to that slashed area on the uh, front panel and right sides together. I'm sewing this at a half inch. Now here I'm just marking at a half inch where the side seam will be because I don't, I want to start sewing half inch from the side seam. And now I'm just going to edge stitch on the lining side. Now I'm taking my front pocket panel piece and I'm aligning it to the edge of my lining piece. And we're going to do wrong sides together because we're gonna create a French seam. Now you don't have to do it this way if you don't wanna create the French seam. You can certainly just align it right sides together, sew it at a half inch, and then serge that outer edge together. So I'm sewing down at a quarter inch, all the way around, and if you wanna eliminate bulk, well, I'm gonna go up this edge, but if you wanna eliminate uh, bulk at the side seam, I would stop uh, at this edge right here and then just serge that side seam with um, the pant. So at a quarter inch I'm sewing this. I'm going to back tack there. Now I'm going to turn this inside out, press it out, and you can see right here I'm just finger rolling the edges, and then I'm going to poke out that little corner. You can also, if you decided to um, sew it all the way around like I have, you can cut that inner corner so that um, it's nice and flush. Perfect, and now we're gonna finish that French seam by sewing at a quarter inch all the way around. And now I'm gonna tack the pocket um, down. So what I'm doing is I'm smoothing it out and matching the notches. And I'm gonna tack that down just within the seam allowance, so at a quarter inch. And now I'm gonna tack that as well. And then while we're here, we may as well uh, create our pleats, so matching your notches for your pleats. So I'm going to sew the first, and I'm pleating towards the side seam. And I'm just tacking the top, and then I did the second one, same thing, pleating towards the side seam, and now I'm just pressing it out.
Now, if you like, you can stitch those pleats down too. I kind of like the fullness of leaving them out. Now we're gonna start with the zipper fly. So you're gonna want both your front panels, your fly extension and your fly as well as your zipper. So I'm starting with both front panels together at the crotch and I'm gonna sew the crotch up just to the area that's notched. And this is right sides together. Now I'm gonna press that seam out. So I'm just pressing that crotch area nice and flat. It looks good. Now I'm gonna take my uh, zipper and I'm aligning it just to the serged edge. So I'm aligning the zipper tape to the outside area of the serge. And I've got my zipper foot on and I'm stitching right to the zipper teeth. I like to um, sew my zippers on pretty close. And then I'm gonna lift my presser foot with my needle in, bring my uh, zipper pulley down so that I can get nice and close at the top there as well. So now I'm gonna take that, I'm going to place it on the right side of the fabric and I'm gonna stitch directly over the stitch that I just created because I can't see where the zipper is. Stitching over that line guarantees that you have a really nice finish. And I'm just gonna back tack. And that looks really nice to me. Now I'm gonna switch to the other uh, zipper foot and I'm gonna edge stitch along that, um, along the front panel right by the zipper, creating a nice seal. And I'm just pulling on my fabric slightly because I want it to be nice and flush. just before the end of the zipper. So now I'm gonna sew the uh, fly facing to the other side of the front panel, right sides together, at a half inch. And now I'm going to press this out. And now I'm going to take my pieces together and I'm going to press it making sure that looks good my zipper is closed here I want to make sure my pattern on the fabric is aligned and that center front is aligned so both of those edges are nice and aligned so I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to slip it right in between the extension and the facing with both front pieces aligned. I'm making sure they're nice and aligned there. And then I'm pinning my facing to the tape, that the zipper tape that's underneath. 
making sure that looks nice. And since it's pinned, I'm going to be sewing right alongside those zipper teeth just on the facing. So zipper tape to facing and I'm pulling my pins out as I go. Now there are many ways to sew a zipper fly. This is just one of them. Uh, in the O'Keefe balloon pants I have another example. So feel free if you don't have a way that um, really works for you to try uh, both out and see if either of them uh, are easier for you. We're all different. We all kind of understand things differently. So I figured doing them two different ways might help out. So now I'm marking the facing area because I'm going to do a um, top stitch. So here's an easy hack on how to get it um, a really nice uh, top stitch done. So I've just taken my pattern piece and I am um, tracing out a line around it. Uh, and this way when I'm sewing my top stitch on there I can make sure that I um, get a really really nice line. You can also do it uh, in the O'Keefe video I show you how to do it two ways so I show you how to do it this way with the hack um, and also by feeling underneath if you're adventurous and want to try it out that way. Now I'm still going to be feeling for the under part because I want to make sure that I am stitching the facing to the front panel. That is really the purpose of doing this. Um, so just kind of be careful of that and make sure when you do trace it on that it is um, covering the facing. So I'm sewing this with a zipper foot, but you can do it with a regular walking foot. Uh, it makes no difference. I just didn't take this one off to put on the regular walking foot. So it's really hard to see that faint chalk line, but it is there. And I'm following it all the way down and around. And then when I get to center front, make sure it's nice and flat there too. You don't want to get a pucker in that area. Uh, and then I'll back tack. So I'm sewing right to the edge there and back tacking. Now we're going to sew our side seams and our inseams together. So we need our front piece and our back piece. So uh, right sides together, front and back at the side seam, we're going to sew at a half inch. Matching our notches. And so I'm just kind of like pulling, laying everything sort of nice and flat. sides then we're going to serge that side seam and then we're going to press it out. And I'm pressing the side seam towards the back panel um, just to eliminate bulk from the pocket there. And now we're going to sew our inseam, so right sides together, front and back. Matching my crotch seams. And 
and now we're going to serge the inseam together and then we're going to press it out. Now we're going to sew the waistband and waistband facing. So you need your completed pant as well as your waistband. So you're going to take one of the longer pieces and a shorter piece and you're going to sew it at center back at half an inch. And you're going to do the same for the opposite side. So the longer piece is the piece that would um, attached to the fly extension. And we're gonna press that out. And now we're going to attach our waistband. So again, the uh, longer piece, the one with the double notch, uh, is going to attach to the front. And you're going to start at the half inch notch, so the waistband should be protruding by half an inch. And we're going to sew it to the uh, front at a half inch seam allowance. And be sure to match your notches, so we'll notch that waist notch. I will match the waist notch, sorry. And then center back. side seam again making sure all of our pleats are nice and flat all right and we're gonna take our facing and attach it right sides together And I'm just uh, gonna switch out to a zipper foot here. Because I like to get really nice and close since we're gonna be sewing it all the way around um, to that sort of front edge. So here I'm just pinning it to make sure it's all aligned pretty nicely. So starting at that uh, center front edge, I'm going to sew it up so it looks like mine might have stretched out slightly. Um, it should be at a half inch, but uh, whatever aligns right with the front, you'll sew up uh, straight there. And then at a half inch all the way around. And make sure you're matching your notches. back seams notching, matching. down to match the 
the fly and just back tack. And then we're gonna wanna cut off the excess and clip the corners. And we're doing the same on both sides. And now we're gonna press this out. So we wanna turn it inside out. And sorry for doing a little work off camera there, but I'm using my sewing tweezers just to push out those corners. I will get better at filming. <laughs> and now I'm just pressing that out. And I'm also pressing in, so I'm pressing that waist seam up into the waistband. And then if you like, you can stay stitch the waistband facing just directly over that uh, waist stitch line. Because we're gonna do a stitch in the ditch to seal this waistband together. So if you're worried about it slipping and sliding and not sealing properly, I recommend hand, hand sewing the waistband loosely. Um, just until you finish the stitch in the ditch. Here I'm showing you how I stay stitch. So it's pressed under and I'm just kind of pushing that waistband facing, making sure that it's over that stitch and sewing. I won't show you how I do the entire thing, I don't think. stitch in the ditch so really literally the name is that because we are stitching in the ditch of the waistband uh, to pant seam so right in that area and what it does is it becomes invisible um, on the right side of the fabric so on the right side of the garment and you'll only see the stitch line um, on the inside. And now we're going to sew our belt loops on. So again, this is a different method than the one I used uh, with the O'Keefe balloon pants. Uh, similar, but different. So here I'm taking that searched folded edge and um, I'm edge stitching with my 1 16th of an inch uh, foot on one side and then I'm gonna edge stitch on the other side. But again, if you have a loop turner and you'd prefer to just sew it at a quarter inch and then turn it inside out, that's totally fine too. Whatever you prefer and whatever's easiest for you. So now I'm gonna cut my belt loops as per the pattern instruction. And I'm using my ruler and a 
self-healing mat as well as my rotary cutter to do this. You can use your scissors. I just like using my rotary cutter. Great, so we have five pieces. Now I'm gonna press down each piece at a half inch. So I'm just gonna fold it down and press it. First I was like, I'm gonna use this method. And then later I was like, I don't really like that. So now I'm just doing that. I find it's like so much faster. So again, half inch. Both sides. Right now we're going to attach it. So you'll see markings on the pattern piece as to where you should attach it. So here I'm stitching uh, just kind of two uh, tacks essentially. So one right above the other and then pushing it down and I'm doing the same here as well. So I'm doing two tacks, one just above the other. You can use your walking foot, one of the edges of the walking foot, to measure distance so that they look even. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm doing it on the front, and then I'm going to be doing it on the side seams and center back. Now when I attach it to the side seam, I attach it right next to the side seam, but on the back panel. I'm just using the awl to make sure it's aligned nicely. And then at center back. Lastly, at the other side seam. And again, I'm attaching it right next to the side seam, but on the back panel. And I'm just trimming up all of my threads, making sure it looks really nice and clean. Thank you. 
And now we're gonna finish up with the hem. So I like to start at the inseam and I'm sewing on the wrong side of the fabric and I'm using my 1 of an inch edge stitch uh, foot to do this. You don't have to do it this way. If you have another way that you like to hem pants, you can most certainly do that instead. And once you finish up this side, you'll repeat the same on the opposite side. And that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.